Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me here again at the Teacher's Tribe podcast. I am your host, Maxine McFarlane. Today's episode is for everyone, especially those of us who are not currently keeping a regular work schedule. Undoubtedly, a global pandemic fits the description of a crisis situation. Since we're all experiencing it, I want to offer five tips that could help you find ways to cope during a crisis. Victor E. Frankel said, When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Herein lies the heart of the work that we must do in order to cope during a crisis. Changes have occurred in every area of our lives, and if we are not mindful, we could easily become overwhelmed. Unfortunately, many people have. Shortly after schools closed, I was somehow able to tune into how I was feeling and found a way to decide that I would not allow myself to become overwhelmed. I told myself that since I cannot change the situation, I will engage in a deliberate act of choosing what I will focus on daily. A couple months ago, during one of my walks, I listened to the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast episode in which she encouraged listeners to choose a COVID-19 mantra, a fun way to celebrate these difficult days. Before I completed the three and a half mile walk on the trail, I came up with my own mantra, which is reset, renew, and be ready for the other side. I decided that every day, Several times throughout the day, actually, I would reset myself when I was starting to feel agitated or anxious about something. And I also decided that I would take this time away from the classroom, away from the building, to renew, to find ways to get my mind on a better, more positive way of thinking. And also, I decided that I would be ready, I would make myself ready to face whatever will be on the other side of the pandemic. I still don't know what that is. There's still a lot of uncertainty, but I am resolute in maintaining that, that whatever comes on the other side, I'm going to be ready to face it. While I will be offering coping tips based on my personal experiences, I'm aware that we are unique individuals with varying coping skills. As you listen, keep in mind that you have the power of choice and the freedom to determine what will work best for you. I anticipate that my recommendations will ignite your own thought process and help you to come up with strategies that you will be able to implement in your personal experiences. Tip number one, accept what you cannot change. Now, I know this may sound very cliche. However, it is an important first step in changing your mindset and response to a crisis. I am so grateful that I was able to quickly relinquish the desire to control the varying aspects of my work as a teacher. Initially, I got a bit anxious about so many things related to my students. Do they all have access to devices and internet connection? How would they cope if they struggled with a task and I'm not there to help them? What more could I do to support my English language learners and those who needed differentiated instruction? How will I support my students during remote learning while still monitoring my two school-age children? Now I could easily add a dozen more questions to this list with the mounting anxiety that they created. I think of my friend, Trisha, we went to grad school together and she always would say, you know, whenever there was a problem or a situation to be handled, she always said, well, things have to work out. It must work out. When I reminded myself that things have a way of working themselves out and the fact that this situation is unprecedented, I was able to reset myself. 
by simply accepting that I cannot change the reality, I was better able to focus on what I can control. The second tip was birthed out of this process of resetting and shifting my focus. Tip number two, focus on the blessings. Now I can hear some people saying, what possible blessings could a pandemic bring? And here's another quote for you by Wayne Dyer, who said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Finding the blessing in every day goes a long way in helping me to cope during a crisis. I choose to focus on the blessings associated with slowing down and taking a break from the hustle and bustle of life. Among the blessings that I focus on are, I can walk on nearby trails, I can spend more quality time with my immediate family and reach out more frequently to members of the extended family. I still have access to food and other basic needs. I am in fairly good health. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list, and I hope my list will inspire you to think about the blessings that you can identify in your own life. Tip number three, engage in a hobby, especially one that you didn't have time for before. I could have added, I now have more time to read for pleasure to my list of blessings. I decided to save it as an example for this third tip. Can you think of something that you wished that you could do, but was always too busy to actually do it? I have been keeping and updating a reading list in my phone for several years. Throughout the school year, I had the best of intentions to get through it. However, it would only happen during spring and summer breaks. Most of the books that I get to read during the school year are either for instruction or professional development. It is a joy to just find a comfortable spot now at home to simply immerse myself in reading a good book. Tip number four, make the most of quality time with loved ones. I must admit that things were a lot more challenging during the initial weeks of remote learning. This is another example of how my mindfulness practice came in handy. I sensed that the tailspin that we were thrown into was going to be difficult. So I decided to make decompressing a deliberate act. One way that I did so was playing board games with my sons. And I'm proud to say that I am still their undefeated champion of Monopoly and hope that they have picked up some financial literacy skills. A couple of weeks ago, one of my nieces who lives in Germany initiated a virtual family get together. Four generations were represented and our scheduled one hour meeting easily turned into three hours. Although we were in five different countries and subsequently different time zones, it was great to reconnect, check in and catch up with each other. We have now decided to meet once a month and I look forward to more meaningful connections with my extended family members. Tip number five, trust yourself to know what works for you. I noticed that two opposing schools of thought have been floating around concerning how we should respond to the current crisis. One idea is that this is an opportune time to start something new, to maximize the gift of time that this situation has afforded us. Some people believe that this time should not be wasted, but we should come out of the pandemic with something new, like a side hustle, a new book, a business idea. We should have completed some major home improvement projects, large scale cleaning and or decluttering or some other major venture. Now, if this is something you can find peace with and it will add to your well-being, then go for it. However, if the mere thought of taking on anything major increases your stress level or causes anxiety, please, please give yourself permission to not take on what you cannot handle. In addition to that, be comfortable with your decision. We are living through traumatic experiences daily and our responses will vary. 
If you feel like your new daily routine is already a balancing act and you may just collapse if you add a pin to that load you're carrying, then focus on what you can manage. Your mental health should also be among your priorities. Now, if this time of respite gets your creative juices flowing and you're excited about having the opportunity to be productive, then by all means, do it. If you're a parent or caregiver for children, I also encourage you to engage them in conversations about coping in this crisis. Provide opportunities for them to also figure out what they need to handle their own anxieties and fears. They can also explore the tips that I have shared here. And I'll review them quickly. One, accept what you cannot change. Two, focus on the blessings. Three, engage in a hobby, especially one that you didn't have time for before. Four, make the most of quality time with loved ones. And five, trust yourself to know what works for you. If you have not yet done so, go back and listen to episodes one, two, and three, where I spoke with my children about their social emotional well-being during COVID-19. They shared some of the strategies that they are using to cope with this crisis and have been making the best of the months since our lives have changed. We must find ways to handle all that we are currently facing. So I encourage you to do the work to help yourself through it. If it is too much for you to handle alone, I encourage you to seek the support you need from someone you trust or from a professional. We do not have a playbook for every situation and certainly not for this one. It is, however, possible to get through it. If you haven't figured it out by now, I love quotes. I found an interesting one attributed to Virginia Satir that I will leave for you to ponder. I will not elaborate on it, but will read it twice and allow you to pull your own message from it. It says, life is not the way it's supposed to be. It's the way it is. The way you cope with that is what makes the difference. I'll say it again. Life is not the way it's supposed to be. It's the way it is. The way you cope with that is what makes the difference. Until the next episode, walk good and one love.